Yes, and let's, let's have this a bit more um, informal. Imagine you're standing around me and I'm using the instrument and you're firing questions. You know, feel free to ask me to do something. You maybe you see an interesting spot on the sample. Uh, so um, let's get straight because we are running out of time. Now, I'm, I'm now dialed in. Let's hope all the technology pieces work together because I'm sharing my screen here I'm in Europe, but I'm connected to an instrument in Santa Barbara in California. Right, so um, we have a dual monitor set up in California on, on, on all of our systems. On, on one monitor, on the left monitor, which is uh, what you're seeing at the moment, is our, you know, where our data is sent. Uh, and if I click this button, you'll see the other screen, which is more the live window where the samples are. So I've got uh, multiple samples uh, installed. This just happens to be some bacterial spores, but I'm going to start off with something uh, nice and easy um, and we've got these sort of three tabs which uh, kind of guide you through the workflow so you start by navigating uh, so this is a live image but uh, we have these waypoints so i'm going to drive to uh, the pet sample um, <coughs> should get there in a few seconds so you can have all these uh, memorized points if you have multiple you can use your own instrument much like an auto sampler uh, in fact it's really great in these COVID times because you can you can load the sample up or you can have a colleague as i do in california and load the samples up and then he goes away and i can run it entirely from anywhere in the world uh, with, with an internet connection so here i am on the surface uh, of my um, pet film this one of the calibration samples that we have in the back of the back of the stage so i'm just going to focus three on, on any point. Uh, I now move into the spectra tab. Uh, here where I can select whether I run in IR only. I can run with Raman only, but of course the exciting part is we're running with IR plus Raman. Uh, so in, here, in this sort of top section that I'm circling here is our sort of infrared uh, setup parameters. You can set different methods, start and stop for the QCL. Uh, which wave numbers for single frequency imaging, different laser power levels and so on. And then you have all of the usual um, Raman uh, settings here as well. Um, integration averages and so on. Right. Um, so I'm just going to go straight in and pick a point. So that's my marker. I'm going to pick a point there. Uh, I can start. We've got to adjust the laser powers because I know this uh, PET doesn't like too much uh, laser on it. So I'm going to put the IR down to 19, 10%, and the pro power I'll set at 26%. Uh, and I can start my infrared, or I can go straight to acquire a single. Um, <coughs> in fact, this is at, uh, so the 1722 is where um, <coughs> the peak for that is. Let's start the Raman. Let me go back to the, as technically these things happen sometimes. I think I've actually moved the sample. Let me um, just find that again. Bear with me. There we go. All right. Let's take a picture of that. Take a picture of that. Now let's open up a new document. In fact, so a new document is open. Let's take a picture. So let's focus it first. Okay, now we've got a picture. We can click on any point. We can start IR. We can start Raman, and we will see. All right. So on the on the right hand bottom corner, we've got a live spectrum of uh, the Raman. Um, on the left pane here, uh, we have two traces one is for the optir signal at this given frequency at 1722 and the dc is simply the green reflectivity so i'm just going to um, so i'm going to do one scan uh, in fact uh, even that's too much for the raman we'll do even one scan of that 0 0.1 integration uh, and we'll hit acquire so i'm going to now switch to the other window not oh, bang and the raman is already there uh, and the ir appears right there as well right so that's a demonstration of simultaneous infrared and raman from a simple polymer film you can already see the complementarity aren't you, between the infrared and the raman obviously the carbonyl peak here is active in both infrared and raman uh, but this may be one of the aromatic uh, type peaks but that's only uh, active in the raman and completely inactive uh, in the ir right so 
Yeah, so this is a relatively easy sample, but you can see one scan on each, you've got excellent sequence noise. Uh, let's move on to something a little bit more interesting than that. Um, I've got, uh, sorry, we've got to navigate. I'm going to stop the laser. Let's um, go to navigate. We'll move on to one of the other samples in there. Um, I think I was having a play with, um, what's it? Let's go to that sample there. So I'm going to move that. That's one of the, so this is a, uh, a, a cancer cell line that's now mounted on glass. I can switch to a low mag objective if you want a wide field of view. In fact, I can even click this button that gives me control via the keyboard. Um, so I can use the keyboard as a joystick. So I'm moving left and right with my keyboard arrows. Um, and if we find anything interesting, this is where I'm just going to see what happens. Let's go to that point. Uh, let's start a new document because I like to collect different spectra and different samples into new documents. Um, <clears throat> so I'll take a picture of that and then I'm going to switch objectives and go into my high mag. It's the high mag that we use. That's the Cassegrain objective that we use for the uh, data collection. Uh, let's focus that. That looks about right. I'm going to take a picture of that. And now that I've a picture of that, I can go into my spectra uh, tab. And I can use my marker to drive the particular places and collect spectra from there. Now, uh, I've mentioned these before, and I know these uh, cells, they can handle about 19% of the IR, um, and they can handle virtually all of the green. So I'm going to throw that all at them. Um, you know, single scans will be enough, but I'll do one scan on the integration for the Raman, and I'll do 10 colors. Right. Um, let's set that to 1550. And we can start the IR, and we can start the Raman. And you'll see on the bottom right, you'll see the Raman preview come up. Okay, so because this is on glass, I've got some glass background coming from the Raman. So in fact, if I click over here in the glass region, you see that these two peaks are from the glass. If I click um, on here, you'll see that you, we start seeing some biological um, signals come through. All right. Uh, that's fine. Let's uh, hit the the um, acquire single button, and let's move over to the other window. And we can see the Raman appear very quickly there, and we can uh, see the infrared come through. Let's see if we can pick a um, better spot. There we go. Strong signal there. Let's uh, acquire that one. Right, so you can see that's a single scan. That's about a second's worth of data collection of uh, a cell from about a 500 nanometer stop or spot. Uh, now, you know, I've got a long history of FTIR uh, where I'm used to dealing with five, 10 microns and, you know, I'd get excited if I got a spectrum like this in a minute. Um, so here I am from half a micron um, within a second. So it's, uh, it still astonishes me to this day. And, you know, now we're doing it with infrared and Raman. Right, so that's uh, one mode of collection. Um, let me just stop the laser. Uh, we can do arrays. So we can, uh, with the array button, I can set up automatic collections. I can do multiple points. I can say here, 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 here. And then I can go away, have a coffee and come back and go away and automatically collect all of those. Uh, I can clear that. I can do a line array. This, uh, this can be really useful as well. We can draw a line across. Um, and then we can specify the spacing. Um, you know, spacing is as little as about 100 nanometers works well. I think as I showed you in one of my examples. If you have a sample with some topology to it, you can do an autofocus. Um, this is a fairly flat sample, so um, we don't need to do that here. If you want to do a high hyperspectral, you can draw a box, uh, and then in a similar fashion to before, you can specify the spacing, um, and you can you can, you can collect an old-fashioned uh, hyperspectral map. Uh, that'll be both infrared and Raman will be collected simultaneously. So in fact, we end up with two data cubes, one for the infrared, one for the Raman, all collected simultaneously. And, you know, and it, it gives you a, a, an estimate of the time as well. Uh, so in this case, this would be uh, sort of a three-ish uh, hour collect. Of course, hyperspectrals uh, take longer. Uh, but what you know, is, you know, what, what we should take advantage of is, is the QCL with its single frequency uh, collection capabilities. Uh, so let's show some of that off. Um, 
So what I'm going to do is now draw a image box. In fact, what I'm going to do is click that and make sure my uh, laser is uh, nicely and tightly focused. Okay, so with, with the laser on, uh, anyone doing Raman, you'd be familiar with using this to make sure your Raman um, is nicely focused, and it is. So let's stop that. Let's draw a box which will represent our measurement area. Uh, let's maybe measure both of these cells. Let's uh, hit the green accept button. And then at this point, we come to the image tab. So here it says we've selected a 42 by almost 33 micron area. Uh, I would like to do, and I, mean, I haven't measured this cell before, so I don't know exactly what's in it, but what can be useful just for imaging purposes is to do an, an amide one image and a lipid image. So I can do either single images in here or I can do a sequence. Right, so uh, I've already got a sequence set up. So here's, I can, so I can add images to the sequences, just the two image sequences. I've got one at 1740, one at 1656. I can set the powers in, in independently if I like, or I can add other things. I can even change the focus uh, as a function of uh, image as well. Right, but um, now in terms of, um, let's do say a 0.25 micron step size. So a quarter of a micron. Um, quarter of a micron. Uh, we'll image at about 500 microns a second. Uh, and these two images will take us just shy of two minutes. So um, I'm going to start a sequence. Right. Um, this might be a good opportunity to uh, two minutes. So if you've got any comments or any questions, I'd love to get some feedback. So on the right hand side, if there are no um, questions or comments, I'll, uh, I'll give you some live commentary. So we've got two ch channels being collected. Um, of course, this is only infrared because you can't do single frequency in the Raman. Uh, wouldn't be nice if you could. Uh, so on the right hand side, we've got the, what we call the DC channel, which is simply a reflectivity image. So this will usually marry up with the visible image because the visible is also a reflectivity image. And in this case, it's just a green reflectivity. And on the left, uh, you've, you've got the OPTIR signal channel. So in this case, this is our first one, that's at 1740. Uh, so you'll see that the next image that comes up, the DC will be exactly the same because the reflectivity is still green, reflectivity is green. Uh, but then this will change a little bit because now we're collecting the protein uh, frequency in the second image. All right, now, single frequencies are always good, but as I tell anyone I, uh, I work with, um, it's always, when, you, when dealing with single frequency, you've got to bear in mind that not only are you seeing the total chemistry, you're also seeing things or, or contrast that stems from uh, maybe topology, maybe sample thickness variations. So it's important to know or trust that a hot spot is hot because of the chemistry and not because it's more in focus there or less in focus or, or just thicker at that spot. So what I'm going to do here is next and the next step this is finished i'm going to do a ratio of those two so i'm going to ratio uh, the lipid to the protein or vice versa and that removes any of the thickness or topology variations out and that will really leave only the chemistry which is of course what we care about all right so that's uh, almost finished i'm collecting this again at 250 micron step nanometer step sizes uh, for like a publication quality i'll probably do this at 50 or 100 nanometer steps uh, so let's um, move over to uh, our pane over here. So we'll look at our OPTIR images. Um, if I just move this across, we'll see that the first one here is the amide one image, 1656. And this one here is the 1740 image. Right, so there are, so you can see the hotspots common. So that's probably a thickness thing, but you can see um, some of them and one of them has um, um, some, some different spots elsewhere. So let's highlight them both. I'm going to go into analysis. I'm going to go to ratio. And I'm going to say, uh, yes, we'll do 16. That, that's right. And we'll do cross-correlate inputs. So that's, we'll take care of any drift, if, if there's any drift between these two measurements to make sure that everything lines up really well. Uh, go continue. We'll accept that. Um, 
And let's change the color palette on that to a um, Cold War. And we'll adjust uh, the color scale on that to bring it into a range. Okay. Right, so already we can see that. Uh, so we've done now. What is it? It's a it's an amide one to protein. Um, so amide one to lipid ratio. So that would mean then that the lower numbers are the ones higher in lipid. Right. So I'm going to send this across to what we call the array. So now I'm going to. So there it is. There. Let's turn off. Um, that guy. Okay, um, so I'm going to use my marker to measure on the hot spots and cold spots, and then we'll just contrast uh, the spectrum that we get off there. So let's um, let's go start IR, start running. Right, so this is where we should have more. Um, lipid, so let's acquire a single spec, um, a non array, and sure enough, we have a lipid shoulder there. Right? So, again, a single scan, about a second. I mean, the signal noise there is always astonishing. Uh, then I'll measure one of these spots, that should be where we have more protein relative uh, to lipid. Let's acquire that. Exactly, right. So here we have no lipid signature come through. Um, so if we compare, let's just overlay some of these as well. Let's get rid of all these spectra. Yeah, so uh, two spots measured apart. One has strong lipid, the other one doesn't. Um, and that also matches with the Raman there as well. So one has a strong CH and the other one doesn't. 